Welcome to Judith Ho, Goddess on Fire. Are you ready for another exclusive sneak peek of the April O'Neil, the ultimate April O'Neil figure coming to you soon-ish? Stop. to say when a new photo comes in I'm just really excited it's a little odd as well because it's me you know you have to kind of be objective about yourself and so uh, fortunately at NECA there's a lot of eyes on this so when I'm sort of going is that what I look like they you know there are people who can say yeah that's what you look like um, so Adrian Smith is the lead sculptor on my figure, which is super cool because she's done so many great women, um, Jamie Lee Curtis and Sigourney Weaver and Linda Hamilton. She's done a bunch. And one thing that's sort of interesting is that she's a fine artist and a sculptor, but she never really had like set out to be a, a sculptor of action figures, but her husband, Jason, uh, is a sculptor and uh, and at some point I'll there's a whole story of how they got into it that's really fascinating so she she's been working on it and what happens is once it goes through the initial approvals she then moves into articulation and articulation is with the figure you've got to figure out where and how it's going to move it's also really important to get proportion right and, and at the NECA studio they're they're like all about proportion they they feel like proportion is equally as important as uh likeness and realism and and making sure that it's really a figure that looks like me in this case um then what happens is they which i just found out they have trevor grove who is uh, really a renowned portrait artist and he does I think about all of the final passes of the figures at NECA and so my figure then goes to him he does the final sort of perfecting and tweaking and zhuzhing and uh, and PS he's worked on like Star Wars and Back to the Future and Alien and I mean he's just worked on a ton of stuff he's, he's really so talented so so the baton gets passed to him and then once that's been approved, then um, copies are made in either urethane or resin. And then those copies are then sent out for approvals. They're also sent to the factory. Next up, the next person that the baton is passed to is Jeff Trapp. And Jeff Trapp is the supervisor of DECO for the entire Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle line at NECA. And so he's gonna do the paint master. And now he has to recreate what it, you know, the skin tone and the hair and the color and the fabrics and everything, which is really challenging because our movie was shot, you know, really dark, which was intentional. John Fenner, who was the DP and Steve Barron, who was the director. I mean, they really had a specific um, look for the film, which is why I think the first film is so different from the second and the third film. Just if you're a film buff, you'll see that it's just got a very different moodiness to it. It's, um, in some ways, it's a little more of an adult version um, uh, of the film, which I really love because I think kids are, are really cool and, you know, they don't really need to be talked down to. And so that's when a lot of the reference photos uh, help. And then I kind of fill in the details of how heavy things were and the kind of bulk and heft that they need to have. So that's uh, pretty exciting. And so he he works on that um, over a long period of time. Uh, in fact, I saw one version that I was like, the. The shoes are a different color. The eye makeup the, uh, on my face is a little bit different. And so I walk them through what our makeup process was. And then also I was like, and the, the skirt had a, a pattern on it. And they said, yes, we're gonna be using digital graphics. And, um, and so they blend a traditional, traditional painting with the digital um, images and it, you get something really amazing that way. Um, Randy was kind of walking, Randy Falk, it, you know, is kind of in charge of most everything over at NECA and I really love getting to know him. And, and he was saying that when they added that digital um, aspect 
to the traditional painting, it really kind of up leveled it and that the mashup of the two of them are really great. So now they're in the paint phase. Um, but one thing that they showed me that I thought was so exciting is they showed me the head of Casey Jones. There's a whole story about that. So I think I'll share that on another video. Um, but I'm thrilled that um, that his face is going to be shown. And I'll, I'll share a little story down the road a little bit about how that came to be. And uh, lots more is coming. So please uh, subscribe and uh, turn on those notifications so when we sneak something in, like maybe a little story about Elias, um, you won't miss a thing. So I will see you on the next episode. Have a wonderful week.